Next to Eric, it's one of my favorite tools in the garage. <laughs> it's going to be one of those two. Because <laughs> there's nothing serious to talk about. It's just bearing pullers. Yeah. It's, it's a good thing. Everything's good about bearing pullers. A bearing puller is like it seems. It pulls bearings. Pulls them off the pinion, pulls it off the carrier. Before the bearing pullers, we used to have bearing splitters, which would try to catch the inner race underneath like an inner pinion bearing. Sometimes they would slip, crush the cage, and sometimes you were successful. Or sometimes your installers would just not pull the old bearings off and yeah. just <laughs> reuse them. But, but here's the thing is, when, when you're installing like a, a new ring of pinion, sometimes you want to know what the stock shim is. Because not all gears are marked with a depth from, you know, when they set up to when they lash the gears. So you kind of want a starting point. So you want to get that bearing off to get what that stock shim is. As you know, as an installer, especially back in the day, you saw a gear installation, you knew you were going to be messing around with bearings for at least half an hour to an hour at a time. And when uh, that tool was made and designed, I don't know who did it. I've never seen the original manufacturer. I've never seen a brand name. I never saw anything on it, but it made sense right away when he explained how it works and you put the clamshells and you go underneath the, the bearing cage and you pull, pull off the bearing with a screw and adapter. You know, your mind works and says, wow, this tool just turned a three, four hour job into an hour or two maybe. They're popular with the people that work on differentials on a daily, weekly, or monthly basis. They'll be familiar with them, but uh, for the common man or the common person, it's just something that doesn't come up where they look at the cost involved on it, you know, you know, two, three hundred dollars for a good differential pinion bearing puller. They might think that it outweighs the cost effectiveness of the job. To me, it's just an excuse to get the proper tool for next time or even just a one time installation. I think if, if I was to go back and not know what I know now, I would still buy a differential bearing puller kit, even for a single installation. It just, it's, it's that much more helpful, that much less frustrating, and uh, allows for a quicker and more accurate installation. Whereas if you don't have one, and if you're using the traditional press and bearing splitter, or if you have to run down to your local parts store or something and have them keep pulling them off and pressing them on, if you get a close pattern or you get something that's close on the setup, you're probably going to say close enough. When you do have the a tool that makes it much faster and much easier and you get close, odds are you're going to go in and do that last setup with a micro correction on there to get it absolutely perfect, which is going to make it quieter and longer running and more professional installation. Okay, so you want to know how to pull a bearing in one simple step? Put on the bearing tool. Wait, that's already the step. Just <laughs> that's one step. Step. Two okay, steps. Okay, these two simple steps. <laughs> put on the bearing tool, pull the bearing off. Really, it is. It's it's you set up, put the, the clamshells around the bearing in the race, bottom lip of the cups, contacting the bearing cage 360 degrees. Then use the screw on the on the uh, puller body and uh, drive it down with your favorite impact gun until the bearing pulls off. I think when people don't use the tool properly, they're thinking like it's an old bearing splitter. They're, they're trying to pull from the inner race, which you actually can. If you can get a bite and you get plenty of the, the lip of the puller under the inner bearing race, you can pull by that. But the easier way and more consistent way is to use the tool as it was designed to do, which is to make contact with the bearing cage. The bearing cage engages the rollers evenly all the way around, and the outer race that you place on there helps keep the rollers isolated, and again, to keep it so it pulls evenly on all the rollers. When you drive down the, the screw on the puller body, it will pull up by the cage, which contacts the rollers, which contacts the inner race, which pulls the bearing off. So the kit comes with multiple <laughs> clamshells, and it really depends on the outside diameter of your bearing to cage. You just kind of go through and you test what fits evenly around the bearing cage. Your pinion bearings are different than a carrier bearing, et cetera, et cetera. Also, your pinion's got a long shaft to it. The carrier, there's no shaft attached to it, so you, there's a tool that, there's a piece that goes in, makes up that difference, so you can pull the carrier bearing out. If you're using a clamshell that's too small, 
you wouldn't be able to close the clamshells. You can have a little bit of separation if it's close. If you got close bites, sometimes you tap in with a hammer to get them kind of in there and, and seated. But if it's too much, you're gonna know because when you go to put the ring down on top of it, it's just not gonna fit. On the other hand, if the clamshell is too large, it'll pull right past the bearing. It will not make contact with the bearing and it's useless. I mean, you gotta see it. If you can't see it, then you better put some glasses on. It could also be too large in that it barely contacts <laughs> the bearing cage. And then under compression, the bearing cage might shift or slip off and, and, and bend or tweak. So that's where making sure that you actually have a nice, solid engagement under that, that bearing lip. Use the smallest adapter that you can to get under the bearing. That's really the simple way. Did this help you determine the right tool for your needs? Give us a like if you want to see more content like this. Got more questions? Want us to cover something in greater depth? Drop a message in the comments below. We'd love to help out. Interested in more parts comparisons, vehicle tips, and installer tricks? Subscribe and hit that bell to stay notified about the next fun project in the garage.